So, um, so Baez, just to kick things off, what are you hoping to see from the team um, for, for this game? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're excited to be playing games again. You know, we've got two good games lined up against good opposition, so they're going to be good tests. Um, and it's just great. Every time we get together with the group, you know, we, um, we, we try to move forward in our style of play and our culture and everything that we're doing. Just as we build through these games, you know, towards the World Cup qualification. I mean, ultimately, the World Cup is the goal. Um, so all of these games are stepping stones, you know, but we want to be effective within these games as well. We, and we do want to start to get results. Okay, over to you guys, and welcome, Michael. Hi, guys. Hello. I'm all good. If no one's going to go, hi, Darren. Hi, Sapri. Andrew Borman here. I'm um, Sapri. Just how are you feeling? Obviously, injury on that last tour, but you're back on the bench last weekend. How good are you to go? Yeah, all good. Um, still just managing my body. Um, I think. The last year or so has not been the easiest, but I think I'm in a position now where I know my body quite well. And um, yeah, I've had to manage my calf, but the the last couple of weeks I've been in team training. And as you said, I was on the bench the last game. So yeah, I'm training this week and yeah, I'm good to go for the game. And just how good did it feel to get out there in the last window with the guys again after such a long absence? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, obviously, the, the group of boys that we have are very special. I think um, we're definitely building something, um, aiming towards the World Cup where we can do something special and achieve some, some big things there. So for me personally, it was very good to, to be back. And um, as always, it's a huge honor to, to represent the country. Cool, thanks. Um. So Preet, Michael Burgess here from the New Zealand Herald. Uh, good to see you. Um, you kind of played it down in that answer before, but um, can you just give us a picture of what it has been like for you over the last um, almost two years, 18 months? Because it feels like you've been through um, a hell of a lot uh, on and off the field. Yeah, of course. Um, I think um, many things happened in, in the past two years for my career. Um, some were good and some not so good, but I think Everything that happened happened for a reason and um, it's made me a better person today and it's um, definitely made me mentally a lot stronger um, trying to battle through all the all the challenges that I've faced and I think going forward it's put me in a better position to be able to cope with um, situations that may occur. Um, so yeah, in terms of everything I went through I think yeah, it was fine and I'm ready to ready to go and ready to take the next steps of my career again. How have you dealt with all the uncertainty because with the injury because it must have been so uh, so hard to to deal with at times um, when the things weren't coming right yeah for sure it's um it's a tough injury to to try and get a hold of and to know um, what to do to make it right um, but yeah it's a process I tried many things I spoke with many doctors and um, many specialists to try and get it right and I think yeah, it was just a matter of time as well. I think over the years I probably overworked my body, so I just needed a bit of rest and time to reset. Um, I think that was the main thing in, in how I got it better. So, I, yeah, I learned a lot along the way through different people and just tried to use that and create a good routine so that I'm feeling well and healthy now. And a lot of people, including the, the guys <coughs> sitting next to you, have said that, you know, you've been missed in that time and you're the creative uh, element this team needs. Um, how, how do you feel when you hear people say those kind of things about you? Yeah, I think it's pretty assuring and pretty nice to hear such such comments. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's my job to help the team and try and perform the best as possible for the team. And, you know, if I can be there and create for my teammates or even score goals, um, I think that's a good thing and it's something I always want to do and will continue to do. Thanks, Alfred. Darren, I'll just jump in here. Um, can you, what does it mean to have people like Sarpreet, Marco, Libby, all together in the team? And, and how high is the ceiling for, for these players in this team moving forward, do you feel? Uh, it's, it's exciting. You say, you know, they're an exciting group to work with. We're, we're very young. You know, we do have 
a few of those older players, but you know, we are a pretty young team that is going to be together for a number of years. You know, the majority of this squad could stay together for the next 10 years, you know, which covers quite a few World Cup cycles. So we've got some really good, talented players that are forging careers in, in Europe. Uh, and now, and some of the ceilings are, are super high. You know, obviously, sapri has been through some stuff over the last few years, but, you know, was at one of the biggest clubs in the world a few years ago. And that's the challenge now to, to get back to those levels. But some of the players we have, you know, playing for the for the All-Whites and hopefully you know, getting to the World Cup and performing gives people a platform to show how good they are on the world stage. You know, so we're, we're pretty excited on a, on a daily basis to work with these guys. And uh, we have some fun in training and, you know, they, um, they play some good football. And Darren, how are you settling into things? I mean, you know, caretaker managers going into full-time managers have actually had quite a lot of success. I don't know, have you looked to someone like Gareth Southgate and the success he's had with England? Is, is that someone you've looked to, um, you know, while managing this team? I'm aware of it. You know, I don't, I haven't really looked into it, if I'm honest. Um, I just feel like you just, you know, get into the job, do the best I can personally. I've got good staff around me, you're really good people. Uh, and, and we're blessed with a really good squad. So, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy the role. You know, we, um, we work hard, but we, we enjoy it as well. It's, it's a good role to be in. I'm, I'm very, very proud of, of the position I hold. And, you know, it's an honour. And Sarpri, just lastly from me, um, playing Greece in a closed stadium, what's, what is it like playing in a closed stadium? And does it, can it affect you guys negatively, potentially, in a game like such as against Greece? No, I don't think so. I think um, obviously it's always nice to play with, with fans. I think it provides a different atmosphere and a different feeling. But, um, you know, for us it's a, it's a game which is an opportunity to, to develop as a team. And I think um, for us it doesn't make a difference whether it's with fans or without fans. Um, we just know what we have to do. And like Bay said, we want to try to get results now. So we have to put in a good performance and, and pick up a win. Hi to both of you. Um, this one's for Darren. So the goalkeeper rotation has become a bit of a feature of your first two windows since becoming the permanent head coach. Um, do you plan to be alternating goalkeepers between this month's two games? And is there a chance there for a debut for Phoenix youngster Alex Paulson? Yeah, I, I think we're, we're blessed with quite a good crop of goalkeepers. Um, you know, obviously we've got three here. We've had three different ones, and, and you know we, we've got other players that are, are options for us. So, I think right now we we are giving people opportunities, uh, and really looking for someone to really grab that number one spot. You know, um, you know within their club form and, and with us when we give them opportunities. So, yeah, we, we'll um, we've got three good goalkeepers here. You know, and we, we need to make some decisions. Obviously, only one of them can play in each game, so that's a little bit more difficult for that position. Um, so we'll make some decisions over the next two games and uh, yeah, hopefully give people opportunities to showcase themselves and, and keep pushing forward to, to try to be in that number one spot You know, as we come towards those bigger games you know, in the next couple of years. Sure, um, and on Greece, they've got a Euros qualifier four days afterwards against France. So considering this, what sort of strength of lineup and approach the game are you expecting from them on Saturday? Yeah, they've named a pretty big squad. Um, so I'm expecting the coach to potentially give a few people an opportunity um, to play. So it'll be interesting, you know, he's got the choice now to, does he sort of play some players in preparation for that big game or does he rest players for that bigger bigger game that they've got coming up. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, whatever they put out, you know, we know uh, roughly how, how they're going to play um, and we know sort of what we want to do. So I, I know whatever team they put out, they're going to be pretty strong. You know, they're a deep squad of, of good experienced players playing in pretty good levels around Europe. So it's still going to be a good test. Um, but they may have half an eye on their big game coming up. Um, and finally from me, so both um, Greece and the Republic of Ireland, as you'll know, are ranked quite significantly above New Zealand in the world rankings. Um, is there any real focus on results for these games or a pragmatic approach or is it more about building the team chemistry and keeping a consistent style? Yeah, I mean, if I'm honest, we, we um, 
try try telling these guys not to win. <laughs> yeah, these guys these guys try and win every time they go on the training pitch, let alone on the pitch. So we we, we want to win. You know, we know it's not a qualifier, and if you don't win, you get knocked out of anything. But you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't sit here and say that we're we're not trying to win. We want to win every game that we play. Uh, but we do know, you know, what are the rewards and everything for for winning these games. The rewards right now are probably ranking points and getting ourselves moving up up the ladder in those in in the ranking system, which is important. Uh, but like I say, uh, there's also the building towards the actual World Cup qualifiers and and then the World Cup. So we we are using these as, as stepping stones to keep moving forward. But listen, we want to win. Good day, Darren. Um, just uh, how do you plan to use your squad over the two games? Um, again, we'll, we'll play the first game and we'll play the game to win. And then we'll monitor everybody, see see how everybody is after that game. You know, we do have a, a good squad and some good options. So there will be changes. I can't see that we'll go, you know, straight from game to game with the same squad. And because we've got some good people, you know, waiting for their, their opportunity. Um, so we want to become pretty pretty stable with how we're doing things. You know, we don't want to keep chopping and changing players and, and everything completely. So, uh, but you know, we'll have to see how people are fitness wise, loadings wise. Um, if there's any any slight injuries after the first game before we head into the island game. And is everyone okay? Um, considering what happened in the last camp, is everyone okay and ready to go so far? Yeah, we've had we've had nothing new. We've obviously. Carrying a few players that we're we're monitoring uh, and limiting sort of minutes and load ins, but uh, yeah, touch wood, we um, we haven't had anything within training. And how is uh, sorry if you are, sorry if I missed this at the start, but how is Chris Wood? Yeah, yeah, Woods is good. You know, he's come into camp off the back of you know, playing in that last Forest game. He's um, we've we've had some good communications with the the medical department at Nottingham Forest. And, and we've got a, a plan to, you know, to ease him back in, you know, limiting his minutes and his loadings. Um, and so far, he's, he's, he's progressing really well. You know, he's feeling good. He's not, not feeling anything from, from the injury. And he's, he's in a pretty good place. So we've got one more training session now. Uh, we'll train later today. And we'll, we'll sort of see how everybody gets through that before we name that team for tomorrow. Thanks, Derek. All good. Darren, if Chris played 15 last weekend, is it fair to say he's not in a position to start in Athens? Um, I mean, you know Woodsy, he, 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 um, he's so proud to play for New Zealand and he, he wants to play every minute. So I think there's probably an element of we need to hold him back a little bit. But like I say, we're, we're in um, communication with his club and they've got some pretty good medical department people there. So, you know, we won't, we won't put him in a position where he will allow himself to um, push himself too far. So we'll, we'll have a look at and see what the, the best way to utilise Woodsy is in this first game. And just lastly, just aside from results, what are the things we should be trying to see on the field, you know, from the team over these two games that will sort of show that, you know, what the team's trying to do is starting to be embedded? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're conscious of the fact that we want to play a certain style. Um, and I think... Every time we get together, we're, we're tweaking things slightly in, in regards to how we can become more effective. So ultimately, you know, we want to get more shots, more goals, more attacking opportunities to score goals. So there's certain things we've been looking at within training and talking about to help us get into some, some better areas to actually become more effective. Good, thank you. Okay, any further questions from anybody? Cool. Uh, in that case, we'll call that there. Uh, cheers, Bays. Cheers, Sapreet.